What's going on, growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tuck want to take you with us as we grab a fresh harvest from the backyard garden and as we share a different perspective to growing your own food. Let's go! You may be wondering why I'm wearing a suit while harvesting food from my backyard garden, but the goal is to bring a new approach and a new perspective to gardening. I got the inspiration for this video from my hero, Joel Salatin. I've had the opportunity to meet him before and he's an incredible guy, but I remember watching him at a homesteading convention. And one thing I noticed is when he went and gave his speech, he wasn't wearing, uh, he was wearing a suit and tie just like I am like this. He wasn't wearing like uh, overalls or something with a piece of Timothy grass sticking out of his mouth because he understands how important it is to create a new perspective around gardening that it's for the bright young minds. It's not just for, you know, second class citizens or people who are uneducated. Growing your own food is so important. We need to realize that growing your own food is the most important and empowering thing, one of them, that we could do all time. So it's vitally important for us to get the young, bright minds into food production because it affects all of us. So you can see some Castata Romanesca ready. We've got more of them ready down here. I'm gonna grab a carrot right over here too. Just real quick, we've got a lot of nice carrots in here. Tuck's actually inside right now because it's incredibly hot out. We thought it would be a little ironic to wear the suit on such an incredibly hot day just to show our dedication and to show the importance of of again, trying to get young people and trying to build a new generation of gardeners who aren't just about growing things in monocultures. We want to grow things in polycultures. Look at this, let's grab a double carrot. Bang, look at that. You don't get better carrots than that. Absolutely beautiful, incredible food from the backyard, organic. Everyone's gotta be growing their own food. It's just so rewarding in so many ways. Let's get some more stuff. So let's head over to some of the tomatoes, grab some of those, and then we can get some grapes and stuff too, those are starting to get ready. Me and Tuck want to let you know that there's only about a week or so to grab the summer merch before it's gone for good. So if you want to grab a shirt or something, make sure you do while you still can at jamesbrigioni.com. Come over here. <laughs> More soldaki tomatoes over here. So you'll notice this approach to gardening, it's not your standard, typical monoculture, plant one thing and put them all next to each other. No, this is a polyculture where there's all different kinds of plants interplanted with one another to help support each other. Kind of modeled after, like, after a natural system or a natural forest. So it's a different way to garden. It's a different way to approach food production. And we think it's a lot of fun. Look at this old docky tomato. Beautiful. Let me go in the back though. I've got some fresh celery too back here. So what's so important with gardening, especially in a backyard garden, is this idea of microclimates. So there's gonna be different locations on your property that certain things are more conducive to grow and grow a lot better in those spots. For instance, this celery right here, celery likes an area that's gonna be relatively like shaded and have a lot of water. So this is a spot where I put, I built this bed on top of a concrete slab so the water doesn't drain incredibly well, but it works really fine because this is a celery and it has shallow roots and the, and the uh, bed back here stays really damp, really wet, and it just works perfect. So check out this celery harvest here. This has got to be my biggest and best celery that I ever grew. Look at that. Beautiful. Looks like the boss is out here now too. What's up boss? What's up little man? Do you want a carrot boy? It's getting so hot out here boy. I don't know if you even want this. <laughs> it's getting too hot for a little dog. And eh, maybe we'll have a taste of a carrot or two. This guy's so good. He's a beast. He's the dog. He's the leader. And he's really the boss, I'm just his sidekick. So if you guys love seeing the videos and you love seeing Tuck in the videos, grabbing some snacks, make sure you spam the hearts down low and hit the subscribe button if you wanna see this guy all the time in the garden. Let's continue the harvest because it's only getting hotter out. But me and Tuck have thought about it. There's no other place we'd rather be than in the garden harvesting some incredible food. Let's get some stuff from here. The keyhole raised bed, inspired by Bill Mollison, one of the all-time heroes of gardening, of permaculture. I mean, uh, Bill Mollison is just an incredible guy. We've got so much from him and learned so much from him over the years. Gotta have the Native American white scallop squash, absolute beauty, heirloom, incredibly productive, delicious flavor. Gonna be a staple in the garden from now on because uh, we're not gonna be growing gardens without this thing in it. Incredible, incredible food. Let's check over here. We've got some Castato Romanescos ready. I'm not gonna harvest some because I already harvested so many. I'd say we've got like five or six, maybe seven ready, just in this little area. 
again, this, this keyhole raised bed, it's, it uses geometry to its advantage. So we're getting more food out of less space. Well, well, we are also growing things up against the trellis in the back too. So it's like, this has just become an incredible food producing machine. You'll notice I'm saying the word incredible a lot today because sometimes it's hard to find other adjectives when you're surrounded by this kind of stuff. We've got some grapes that are ready to be eaten, nice and fresh. So happy for some fresh grapes. You'll notice here, look, all the grapes have been stolen and eaten. Same thing here. Like I've said earlier, the critters have been pretty greedy, but they're still saving us some delicious snacks. Let's grab one of these grapes. All the grapes that I'm growing are slipskin American grapes because the European grapes are just too tough to grow in this setting. So we like the American disease resistant grapes native to where we live. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> so sweet. So good. Nothing like fresh grapes in the backyard. Bunch of more stuff to grab. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Uh... Look at these cucumbers over here, man. I did not even see these. Look, up top here. One. Stuck in a fence. Two, three, four, and one little spot. And look at this one, it's getting almost as big as Tuck. I've got bigger ones though, I'm telling you. Some of this food is getting out of hand. We'll leave this and continue harvesting. Come this way. I think I've got a Charente melon ready in the back here. These melons, I know that they're getting ready because I walk back here to check on the chickens and it's like I get smacked in the face with this incredible sweet smell. So let's grab one of these back here and see how they taste. Let me get this one over here. It looks like it's nice and ripe. So ideally when they're ripe, you lift them up and they'll fall off the vine. But this one I think is ripe. So let's see if it is. Let's cut into this baby. Let's see what we got here. It's a good size to it. Hopefully it's got a nice color. Oh, <laughs> oh, I mean, it could have went a tiny bit longer. You can see if we had a little more yellow, that's a good side. It's got a little green over here, but man, this thing looks like it's going to be an absolute winner. I got to taste it. I'm not, I'm not waiting. Got to taste this thing. It smells so good. Let's see. Get this cut here. Shave a little of this stuff out. And then approach it like we did like we're a little kid. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait. <laughs> like, I don't know, it's amazing. I mean, I, adjectives, um, I can't, it took the words right out of my mouth basically. Check there, more Charente melon. Check to the right more and more and more melons. This thing is just kicking out so many melons for us. Incredible amount of food, look at this. <laughs> That's what we love to see so much. Check out the tomatoes, look how big the Sun Gold, I mean the Super Sweet 100 has gotten. It's almost turned into a tomato tree. We're talking eight to 10 feet in height. The Sun Gold Cherry is even bigger. This is why me and Tuck want all people to grow food like this in their backyard. I mean. Anyone that has this much space, probably, you know, 10, 12 feet, you could just grow so much tomatoes in such a small area, especially when you grow them vertically. So, I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. Look at the ground here, look how hot it is. These cucumbers are just getting decimated from the heat, but look at all the cucumbers on them. One there, one here, one back here. So they're still producing a lot of fruit and it's, uh, it's just to be a blessing to be a part of this. Come back here because like I mentioned, we're having some issues with the critters. You'll see over here. Look how hungry they are. Look at this. Completely just eating that whole tomato. But that's okay. They saved us a nice one right here. Woo! Beauty. Absolutely lovely. Excellent tomato. I've got more ones ready here, but I'm not going to bore you with grabbing too many of those. Come this way. Look at this section of the pallet race bed. Look at the look at the critters that are over there. So we're going to make some changes for next year. I think I'm going to add some like random water balls in the garden. So I put it in my notes that heading that about the second week of July going into the third week is when it gets incredibly hot out, incredibly dry. And that's when all the birds and the critters start going after the fruit to get the water out of it, I think. So next year I'm gonna be setting up scenarios where we have opportunities for the critters to have, to get water from different locations besides our fruit. Check this one out. I haven't shown you one this year yet. This is the, this is the uh, white currant. Look how small these little tomatoes are, really cool looking. They do remind me of currants, actually a really good name for the, 
for the tomato. Let's try it. I don't know if I'd call it a white currant. Maybe I'd go with the yellow or champagne currant because that's what it kind of looks like. Notice the plane flying right above us. Just in a normal suburban setting, normal backyard. Doesn't look like it now, but it did in years past. Let's taste these. Mm. Not the greatest, very tart, not a lot of sweetness, a strong tomato flavor, but this would have to be blended with like a sun gold cherry, I think, to really be good. Check over here. More tomatoes, ripe, ready to be harvested. <laughs> Some monsters. Another monster. Great production on this one. This is the Ukrainian tomato. But look at that, I didn't even notice. Man, those critters are really going to town. That's okay though, we still have so much stuff. Check out this mushroom basket, the ones the critters haven't got to. I mentioned it before, but you guys gotta get this one in the garden, the mushroom basket variety. Look at the size of some of these tomatoes. And the ribbing. <whistles> Little mark there, which stinks, but look at that. Oh, that was like a picture perfect heirloom beef steak. Absolutely beautiful. Let's keep going. Head over this way. More soldaki tomatoes, as you'll see right here. More Costaluto Genovese, more Ukrainian tomatoes. Notice how much we get out of the space when we grow things vertically. Come this way. I've got some tomatoes back here I wanna grab. Here's one I haven't shown you this year yet. This is the carbon tomato. This one's doing relatively well. It's got pretty nice color to it. I haven't tasted it yet, but it looks like a real nice tomato. It's doing well in the back here. It almost reminds me of like the Cherokee purple. It's got some of the same characteristics of the coloring, how it kind of creeps up the bottom and moves up to the top late. Really nice look though. And let's come this way. Right here, this one said it was the white shark tomato, but I'm gonna be honest, it's a little yellow to be the white shark or the great white. This thing should be like the great yellow, but I, I can see how it's got some of the whiting in it. I've grown another variety, the white Thomasil in the back, which was I think whiter than this one in the past when I've grown it, but still a pretty cool looking tomato. I'm gonna have to taste it though to see if it's actually a winner or not. One thing I'll notice is that the birds didn't seem like they went, or the squirrels after this one as much, the white tomatoes as maybe the red ones, which kind of catch their eyes. So that's something to think about in the future. Maybe getting some of these, uh, lighter color tomatoes in, maybe more yellows and stuff. Right here, I wanna grab another one of these Berkeley tie-dye, because look how cool these look. <laughs> that actually looks like tie-dye. So I'll grow different varieties of tomato just for the beauty and the appearance, because that's what sometimes gets me excited to get outside. I'm like, oh, I wonder what that's gonna look like when it's ripe. Oh, I wonder if I can get it, how many tomatoes I can get off that plant. So just different things like this make it fun for me to get outside and try them. Even though when it comes down to it, I'm probably gonna be snacking on either the sun gold cherry or if I'm gonna go for something big, probably like the soldaki tomato. Something we did fun this year was grew tomatoes, which this thing looks like it needs some water. As you can see, it looks a bit sad. Tomatoes and cucumbers up the peach tree. Look at this, look at this spot right here. Swing around. It's like, oh, this is just a normal tree, but it's got cucumbers hanging from it. <laughs> Look how cool that is. Me and Tucker are gonna grab this cucumber. This is the variety you have to get in if you want a nice big variety. Heirloom Monster, the Soyo Long. It lacks the bitter gene, so it's not gonna attract a lot of the cucumber beetles. Incredible producer, very productive, delicious, and an absolute winner when it comes to cucumbers. Over here we've got some more cucumbers. Growing in pots, this is the General Lee, great cucumber as well. And then I've got this funny tomato growing in a, in a upside down in a bucket. That's something I'll share with you guys later. I just have a few more things I wanna show you before I let you all leave. But uh, once me and Tuck get these videos started, it's super hard for us to close them out because we just wanna try to bring as much value to you guys as possible. So we wanna try to share some little tips here and there and share some harvests also, this way you guys can get a little bit of motivation, a little bit of inspiration, and hopefully a little bit of education or information out of some of these videos that we produce. Because we want to entertain you a little bit, so we'll, we'll throw a suit on in, this, in the hot weather just to give you a laugh, but we'll also try to tack in some information. So you can get just a little nugget out of one of these videos that can hopefully up your production for the future. Even something as simple as keeping a journal. That'll make a huge difference for you. Look at this cucumber right here. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever grown this variety. Look at this thing. It almost doesn't even look like a cucumber. It reminds me of like Armenian style or something. Pretty unique looking. And then here's my favorite variety, the Socrates. Another incredible variety. If you can only grow two kinds of cucumbers, I would suggest the Socrates and the Suyo Long. Absolute winners.
right here, let's check out some of our first nice pepper harvests. This is the little Jimmy Nardello, nice color to it. We're gonna grab one of these. And then check out how beautiful the Ajvarskis are. Nice, big, torpedo looking pepper. Excellent color. I bet the flavor is so good. The little boss likes pepper sometimes. I wonder if he wants to try. What do you think? Jimmy Nardello or Ajvarski? The Jimmy's got the shape. The Ajvarski, wh which one? Oh, looks like he's a Jimmy guy. So we'll let, we'll let the little Jimmy Nardello do his thing as we grab one more thing. I know I've harvested a lot of it this year. I kind of, I've like become just, I don't know. I just had such a heavy hand when it came to cabbage this year. So I got to grab another one. I planted so much cabbage, but luckily I planted a bunch of varieties and a variety like this one, the Dead on Savoy. Incredible to look at, just absolutely beautiful food. It's hard to believe that this is actually food right here, but it looks incredible. Nice size to it, late producer. So I'm gonna soon be getting my fall cabbage in and I'll basically have cabbage in the ground harvesting while I'm waiting, while I'm getting my fall cabbage in. So it's really fun to extend your season as long as you can and be able to be harvesting this stuff. Nothing feels like Christmas morning when you're in the garden more than peeling back the leaves of a massive cabbage plant. The dead on Savoy. Growing your own food. Let's take away the negative connotations that growing your own food is for like poor people or it's for uneducated people. Let's get to the idea that growing your own food is for people who want to take back control of their lives, for people who want to make the most of the space that they have, and people who want to get in touch with nature and feel like they're really living like a human. Getting attached to the food and just getting attached to, to reality in a sense. So me and Tuck love being out here. We want to encourage everyone get out, start a garden, even if it's planting one tree, planting one tomato plant. Sometimes the start of a seed can blossom and grow into a lot more than just one little thing. This is the Williams Pride apple tree. You'll notice I've got a lot of apples in the ground. It's just unfortunate, but the squirrels have just been ravenous this year. They've gone after my apples. I think it's because they just don't have enough water. So we've got some cucumbers right here next to the apples, but you can see they're eating the apples while they're still in the tree. They left like one or two for me up here. I'm gonna grab one. Oh, that thing just snapped right off. Still a decent apple. Uh, look, they're even attacking the ones that were on the tree. I've got another one over here that's ready. So these Williams Pride apples are so incredible because, it, because they have great disease resistance and they're such an early producing apple. They're ready in early August like this. You can see some of the sprays and stuff that I have on there, some of the kaolin clay, but look how beautiful it is when you just wipe off some of the spray. Nice, shining, beautiful apple. Let's taste this one and see how it is. Fresh fruit from the backyard. If it wasn't for the squirrels, we'd have a boatload of them, but hey, we still get some fresh fruit. Mmm. So sweet, so juicy, so incredible. So blessed to have this kind of food in the backyard. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I'll tell you, it's an incredibly hot day out here, but even though I got the suit on, had a blast. I think Tuck did too. He's been out here more. We gotta get him some water. It is super hot out. We gotta stay hydrated. I think I lost about a gallon of water out here, but <laughs> again, I just had a lot of fun. Me and Tuck are always trying to come up with different ideas and different ways to get people growing food. That's really the heart of what we're trying to do. So if we have to throw a suit on and sweat out here, then we'll do that every day. Because not only do we need to get it done, because we need to get more people growing food, but we also just <laughs> end up having a fun time doing it. We're probably a little bit crazy, but hey, I think everyone's just a little bit nuts. And we might have an addiction to growing food, to planting stuff, but I guess it could be worse in the long run. Me and Tuck wanted to thank one of the new channel members, Steve Baker. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for con contributing to the channel. Thanks for making uh, all this stuff possible back here. We also want to mention to grab some of the merch at jamesprigioni.com, especially the summer merch. If you want to grab it, there is very limited time. So grab it while you still can. We hope you will, you will be back with us soon. Me and Tuck, uh, yeah, we just had a great time out here. Tuck and James, we'll be back at you again. We 